Remember, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. None of these ideas should break your views of reality or existence. They are merely perspectives of reality that warrant further thought. At this point in your journey, if you are beginning to see how the constant cycle of ejaculation may be draining something from you, perhaps even intentionally, despite what you've been told by popular opinion, then it is suffice to say that you are thinking more critically about this reality and not readily accepting the narrative you are being presented with. This puts you in a minority of people within this world. I'm not here to say ejaculation is wrong, just that if you hold the view established in biology that reproductive activity shortens lifespan, as expressed in the disposable summer theory of aging, then perhaps one may question the premise that constant ejaculation is without consequence. A deeper layer to this that I think many on retention will eventually ponder is, why have we humans been set up in this way to be constantly releasing our energies? Why has it been so fervently encouraged? There are billions of humans across the lands constantly releasing energy into the ether. On a macro level, much energy is being transferred by this process. Is this energy we are harnessing and releasing going somewhere? Are we charging something? It could perhaps make sense that we are charging something, a system environment or a process, and if it is something that is being charged, then could the reliance on our continuous energy output not be essential for that very system's own survival? Perhaps what is relying on our energy is the system of reality itself. The physical realm of which we are inhabiting may be reliant on our energy or perhaps consciousness. There is a strong societal push to dissipate our energies into the ether. Perhaps this push to drain our energies is inbuilt into this system to encourage energy output. There exists in this world strong influential forces, the media, public opinion, propaganda. They encourage certain beliefs and actions above others, and they play a central role in shaping public perceptions. One such example is the encouragement of the dissipation of energy through sex and masturbation. But if we view the world from a more mechanical point of view, these abstract forces may be nothing more than complex systems or algorithms of sorts that ensure maximum output of all the battery cells or human energy cells. That we humans are generating electricity has been well established for many years. The elements in our bodies like sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium have a specific electrical charge. Almost all of our cells can use these charged elements, called ions, to generate electricity. The inventor of the battery, Luigi Galvani, had conducted experiments where the legs of frogs suspended on brass hooks would twitch when prodded with certain metals. He referred to this response as animal electricity. We tend to see the world through the lens of spirituality, science, human relations, emotions, feelings and so forth, which gives us a sense of humanism and encourages us to feel that we are very different entities of existence than, say, a robot or a machine. Yet, strip away all these humanized aspects of the world and we are left with a sophisticated system of cells that reproduce, consume and output energy, a highly advanced system of energy conduction much like a computer or a generator. There is really very little we can definitively know about the nature of reality for the simple fact that we are immersed inside of it. There is no point of reference when we are unable to view this realm from outside of itself. We can't perceive up without down, can't perceive black without white. A man born blind cannot accurately grasp the visual experience even if it is explained to him verbally in depth by one who has the ability to see. For the man born blind, the concept of seeing is imperceptible. It is a door that cannot be opened. It can't be explained with words. Words do not suffice. 
it must be experienced firsthand to be known. Like the man born blind, we can see how words and thoughts may fail us in trying to understand what lies beyond the veil of death. It is likely not an experience that can be understood with conscious thought. The riddle of this reality is like an ancient book. All the pages are empty, ink faded to nothing, but a few words and sentences remain scattered throughout the pages. The data is vastly insufficient. And although we cannot know the entire content of the story, we do find hints and consistencies such as familiar words and phrases that lead us to clues about the direction and construction of the story, about the nature of reality. Regardless of how or why we are here, we do know at present that humans exist in this realm and spend much of their time exerting energy and recharging. Our bodies harness and recharge energy for a time until we no longer are capable of doing so, at which time we expire. Our seeds that we have birthed into this world continue on the job of outputting energy. Humans not only harness energy physically, but also mentally through emotions and attention. We know that attention or observation changes the things we look at, perhaps even brings things into existence. From the famous double slit experiment, we have seen how observation collapses wave function from a superposition of multiple potentials to a single state. That is to say, pinned down into a state with a definitive value an Egan value on the Egan state of position. What this means is that before observations, the state of things remain as unlimited potentialities, and it is the very act of observing that locks them into place, that collapses reality. This can make us question whether reality is actually existing in areas we aren't currently observing. If you're watching a girl in a house on TV, does the tree outside of the house at the end of the street really exist? The tree is not on the TV screen. Of course, if you were to take the camera outside to view the tree, it would be there. But as the tree is not on the screen, there is no data in the TV directly supporting its existence. So does it actually exist in that TV program? Or would it be necessary to be in front of the camera before it exists? The TV screen only uses energy to animate what's in front of the camera. It does not animate the entire surrounding universe inside of its circuits. It only recreates what the camera is being focused on. There is not enough data or energy to recreate the entire universe of everything outside of the current camera frame in view. To only bring into existence what's in front of the screen is optimal for energy efficiency to not expend energy unnecessarily. It seems reality also operates in such a way. The double slit experiment may support this notion that whatever is outside of the scope of the observer need not be forged into its physical manifestation until it has been directly observed. That is not to say that objects outside of observation carry no consequences to what's inside the frame just that the physical manifestation of the unobserved object may be unnecessary and not physically existent. Rather, it may remain in a state of pure potential that requires observation to lock the reality into physical substance. As the saying goes, if a tree falls down in a forest and nobody hears it, does it make a sound? Can the sound exist without the observer to hear it? It seems that our interaction with reality is a prerequisite for its own existence. More expressions in the English language have perhaps hinted at the energetic qualities of human attention. Where attention goes, energy flows. And attention is the most important currency that anybody can give you. It's worth more than money, possession or things. Look around you. Reality is set up to harness human attention. Your phone that begs you to look at it quite successfully whenever you can. To check your social media, emails, applications, browsing. 
your television with its unending broadcast of entertainment in your home for you to freely give your attention to. Before that, it was newspapers, magazines, paper ads. It is perhaps the case that such devices too are harvesters of human energy, serving some deeper purpose of powering some larger process that we cannot perceive from this level of existence. Extracting energies from the human to charge something much bigger than ourselves. Because of this energy output humans exert in all fields, we develop and evolve as a species, soon integrating fully to AI and from then on to incomprehensible levels of evolution. Through this, we will eventually create a new world with new perceptions, a new dimension that doesn't currently exist. Whatever the overall intent of this system is, the point that seems clear is that our human participation is absolutely necessary. This system or this reality seems to feed on energy for survival. That is to say that without the human energy input, this universe may cease to be. Without our consciousness of this realm, this realm may not in fact exist. This reality is powered by your attention, by your emotions, by your energy. It feeds off of them. Reality is a system that seems to feed off of energy to function. As time goes on, technology improves and the overall output of human energy increases. Technology amplifies human energy outputs at an exponential rate. The level of information our computer chips now store would be unfathomable to previous generations of technology. The output of words, videos, all sources of information that in time help move faster the wheels of human evolution and advancement to the next stage of existence. It seems that as time continues, the energy requirements to power the functioning of this reality are ever increasing, and the simultaneous evolving of technology caters to this energy demand. All of your devoted attention and experiences throughout your daily life is intrinsically connected to the running of this system environment you inhabit. Reality is an illusory, virtual environment that is powered by human energy. It is obviously not the default state. Reality is hard to define. The parameters with which we have been provided with to understand life has its own limits. We have a brain that can observe connections and patterns and make overall observations based on these connections. Yet we cannot express with certainty beyond this point what it is we are actually perceiving. What is blue? A color? It can easily be defined by the word blue, but does it really give us the truest essence of what blue actually is? What is blue? What is color? Perhaps we can define it as not being red, not being green. By virtue of what it isn't, we can establish what it is. But how can we get further down to the deepest unadulterated truth of what blue actually is? At this point, blue is just blue. Our human mind cannot take it any further than this. It has reached a limit of perception that may not move beyond that point. But there may be more to blue than can be comprehended by thought. There may be higher levels of knowledge that form the structure of reality that cannot be experienced by the human brain. Something we do appear to see, however, is that we have a start point and an end point an entry point and an exit point, a birth and a death. This could be indicative of a vacuum environment, and if we are really existing in a linear sense, then perhaps we will experience a day when we will die. Such a concept could suggest that we are inhabiting some sort of enclosed system, some sort of system environment that has been constructed to perform a particular function that we are existing for a particular purpose. These are just concepts that we can arrive at among oceans of other ideas that are equally justifiable as to why we may exist. That we don't really know anything as to what we are doing here, like a blank slate, 
gives us a strong starting point to creatively explore and investigate many previously held beliefs about the nature of reality.